Hello, viewers. Happy to meet you all again in this wonderful evening. Today, in the third session, we are going to have a topic about interpretation of pure tone audiogram and impedance audiometry. And today we have Dr. Ajit Kumar Kilnani Sir with us. Sir is from Gujarat Adani Institute of Medical Sciences. Sir is having a teaching experience more than a decade. He had done an advanced course in medical education in 2014. And Sir is very good, very good in research. He is having more than 41 publications related to ENT and medical education. It's a great privilege for us to have Ajit Kumar Sir with us. Sir is going to start the session. And if you're having any doubts in the middle, please use the chat section. The live chat section is enabled. You can drop your doubts there. If you are having any doubts, Sarah will be clarifying all the doubts in the end of the session. And we have a pre recorded video. Let's get into the session. Hello, everyone. I'm Dr. Ajit Khilnani from ENT Department of Gujarat Adani Institute of Medical Sciences. I welcome you all to this uh, online lecture series and the topic for my today's talk it is pure tone audiogram as well as impedance audiometry so in my uh, first uh, lecture of this series i talked about the tuning fork test the tuning fork tests were the clinical methods of assessing the hearing loss and today i'll be talking about pure tone audiogram and Tympanometry. Pure tone audiogram, it is one of the most common audiological investigations which is routinely performed uh, for patients who are having any ear pathology or who complain of any hearing loss. Then tympanometry, it is again another form of uh, audiometry in which it is useful to diagnose middle ear pathologies. So we'll see how these investigations are done and what is the how to interpret these investigations. Because in your exams also many times you will be getting uh, graphs of audiograms or a temperometry and then there can be questions to interpret those graphs or to uh, tell the disease in which we get such graphs. So I will try to explain uh, that how can we interpret a pure tone audiogram as well as a temperometric graph. Now pure tone audiogram, it is actually the graphical recording of the hearing level. And uh, there is an instrument which is called audiometer or a pure tone audiometer, which generates sounds of pure tones. Now, pure tones here mean that at a time, the audiometer will check the hearing sensitivity at a particular frequency and a particular intensity. That is why it is called a pure tone. It will produce a tone of a particular intensity and particular frequency at a time. That is why it is called pure tone audiometry. It measures the air conduction and the bone conduction thresholds. So for air conduction thresholds, uh, we use the earphones and for bone conduction thresholds, we use the bone vibrator, which is kept over the uh, mastoid process. Then audiology is performed in a soundproof so that the external environment noises or sounds, they do not interfere with the hearing assessment of the patient. And of course, it is a subjective test. Hence, it has its limitations because it de depends on the uh, person who is doing audiology, his experience, then calibration of the machine, as well as the responses from the patient. So it is a subjective test and it should be interpreted with caution. So this is a, a photo of a, our audiology room in which we can see that it is a soundproof room and this room is divided into two chambers, which are separated by this glass so we can see here on the inner side of this chamber this is a patient who is wearing these uh, earphones and the audiologist sits on the opposite side and this is the audiometry machine and uh, she is performing the audiometry of this uh, patient inside and the patient since it is a soundproof room so the patient has to raise the hand when she hears the sound stimulus so that is how audiology is performed it is a soundproof room and it is divided into two chambers by a glass. In, on one side uh, sits the audiologist and on the other side sits the patient. And if they want, they can also 
convert now here we can see that wiring is there so they can convert uh, through uh, an intercom sort of uh, uh, telephone we can say if they want to convert but otherwise when she hears the sound she will raise her hand so that the audiologist will know that she is hearing a sound at a particular intensity and a particular frequency now what is the use of pure tone audiogram pure tone audiogram it is very important when we want to determine the type of the hearing loss that is whether the hearing loss is of conductive type whether it is of sensory neural type or whether it is of mixed type then the degree of hearing loss that is the patient is having mild moderate moderately severe severe or profound deafness and also to know the nature of the hearing loss so when i will tell you how to interpret the audiogram these things will come again and again so i'll be keep on uh, uh, telling you how, how audiogram is helpful in determining the type degree and nature of the hearing loss audiogram is also important for documentation purpose and especially if we want to compare the pre operative and post operative hearing of the patient then an pre operative as well as post operative audiology uh, is important then for uh, giving handicap certificates for hearing disability it is a documentary proof so it is also required for that also so we'll see each function of this audiogram one by one now the objective of my today's session are that all of you should be able to interpret a audiogram so when you are given a, a graph of an audiogram in your exam then all of you should be able to read it read it means uh, what does it suggest which type of hearing loss which ear is involved what is the degree of the hearing loss what is the nature of the hearing loss so everything you should be able to Uh, interpret so that is the objective of my today's session so when we interpret a audiogram we should keep these five points in mind the first is that we have to determine the side of the ear of which the audiogram is done whether it is of left ear whether it is of right ear or whether it is of both ears then second point is we should identify the air conduction and the bone conduction lines sometimes in audiology only air conduction is plotted sometimes only bone conduction is plotted sometimes both are plotted so we should be able to identify whether it is air conduction whether it is bone conduction then third point is to identify the bone conduction thresholds so when we see the bone conduction thresholds and we see whether they are within normal limits or whether they are high by that we can get an idea that the patient is having sensory neural loss or not because the bone conduction is a measure of the cochlear function so when we measure the bone conduction thresholds we come to know about the sensory neural status of the patient then fourth point is we should ident uh, we should determine or identify whether there is air bone gap visible in the audiogram or not air bone gap means there is difference in the air conduction and the bone conduction thresholds so that is called air bone gap and finally we should be able to calculate the degree of the hearing loss from the given audiogram so when we keep these five points in mind then we can read any type of audiogram given to us so now we'll be seeing each point one by one how these points will help us in interpreting a pure tone audiogram now this is a typical audiogram in which we can see that there are two axes on y axis there is uh, intensity plotted in decibels that is the hearing level the unit is decibels and we see that it is plotted from minus 10 to below it goes up to 140 but generally typically audiograms have from minus 10 to 120 but here it is shown as 140 never never mind and uh, as we go down the sound becomes loud that is the thresholds or the uh, the thresholds that is the hearing level increases so that is y axis now if you look at the x axis in x axis frequency is plotted and this frequency is plotted in hertz hertz means one cycle per second and we can see that the lower most frequency shown here it is 125 hertz and it increases up to 8000 hertz so again uh, mcq can be asked in your neat exam what is the range of frequency in an audiogram so that is from 125 to 8000 hertz but generally when we say speech frequency it is uh, from 500 to 2500 or 3000 hertz so that is the our speech frequency and as we move Uh, on the right side of this x axis the frequency increases or the pitch increases now frequency is a physical property pitch means how the frequency is percepted by an individual that is called a pitch 
so if the frequency is high the it will be percepted uh, by the patient as a high pitch sound so that is the difference between frequency and pitch so that is a typical uh, pure tone audiogram it is a blank audiogram and now we'll see point by point how we can interpret any audiogram given to us so coming to the first point we have to determine the side of the ear of which the audiogram is done now there are two methods to determine the side of the ear first is the color coding now by convention the uh, or uh, the right ear thresholds they are marked in red color while the left ear thresholds they are always marked in blue color and that is by convention which is followed all over the world so if we get a pure tone audiogram in which the lines are plotted in red color we can immediately say that it is of the right ear and similarly for a blue ear we can say it is of the left ear now sometimes uh, some uh, times we do not get a color coded audiogram sometimes we can get a xerox copy of the audiogram in which everything will be black so how to determine the sight in that audiogram so it is by the symbols now again these are universal symbols which are followed all over the world so these are very standard symbols that is uh, if you see that air conduction of right ear you know unmarked now generally we are doing uh, audiograms uh, in unmarked condition and masking it is required when we are checking the bone conduction and secondly when the difference between the air conduction thresholds of two ears is more than 40 decibels then we require masking okay so masked and unmasked um, examination they have different symbols so we see here that the unmasked uh, air conduction of the right ear it is marked by a circle similarly for left ear it is marked by a cross then if we if we are checking the air conduction by masking then for right ear the symbol is triangle and for left ear it is square similarly when we are checking the bone conduction in right ear and it is unmasked then we have the this less than sign and for left ear we have this greater than sign and uh, for bone conduction masked we have this right side open parenthesis and for this this is a left open bracket okay and sometimes what happens is we do not get any response in spite of increasing the frequency in spite of increasing the intensity to the maximum we do not get a response especially when the patient is having very severe degree of hearing loss in such conditions we mark it as no response so we can see here that uh, for right ear this is the symbol for no response and for left ear a cross with an arrow this is a symbol for no response now these are the universal symbols so in your neat exam some mcqs can be framed from these where directly they can ask the interpretation of the symbols or they will or you will be given an audiogram in which these symbols will be there then uh, some questions can be uh, based on that so you have to remember these symbols these are standard symbols so by either of these two methods we can know that this audiogram it is of right ear or it is of left ear so we'll see with examples now we see this is an audiogram now here we can see that uh, uh, at first sight we can say that this audiogram it is of both ears because we can see the red color line also and we can see the blue color line also okay now if suppose a xerox copy of this would have been given then again by the symbols we can say that this is a circle so this is of right ear and this is a cross mark this is of left ear and that is air conduction so here what is shown air conduction of left and right ear so first point is clear first we should be able to determine the side of the audiogram whether it is of left side or it is of right side then moving on the second uh, point is that we should be able to know whether air conduction graph has been plotted or bone conduction because sometimes only air conduction is there sometimes only bone conduction is there now again to know that there are two methods the first is the symbols as i told you earlier that air conduction and bone conduction symbols are different for right and left ears and are different for masked and unmasked ear so that is the same thing and one more uh, difference between the air conduction and bone conduction lines is that air conduction lines they are drawn as continuous lines like this while bone conductions they are marked as broken lines like this so we can remember b for b so bone conduction broken line so we can remember it like this also but second point is that after identifying the side of the ear we should 
be able to identify the air conduction and the bone conduction lines so again coming to another audiogram now here we can see that this is not color coded okay but still we can make out that this is of uh, left ear okay now see the above line it is broken line so this is bone conduction threshold of left ear and the below one this is a continuous line so this is the air conduction threshold of left ear okay if even lines are not drawn then only by the symbols also we can make out so by symbols we can make out the side of the ear as well as the air conduction and the bone conduction lines okay so i hope these two points are clear moving further now we have to see the bone we have to study the bone conduction threshold now this is important so if bone conduction thresholds are within 20 decibels that is less than 20 decibels then we can say that the patient is not having sensory neural hearing loss and if the bone conduction thresholds are more than 20 decibels then we can say that that patient is having sensory neural hearing loss now see when i am talking of, of bone conduction i am not mentioning anything about conductive hearing loss okay so when you are seeing the bone conduction you forget that there is any air conduction line just focus on the bone conduction only one line so just see on the bone conduction now it will be more clear with the examples that i'll give now see this audiogram now if i want to study the bone conduction thresholds you just forget that there is any air conduction line just focus on this line the upper line broken line so it is less than this is this is the decibels um, so here we can see that they are less than 20 okay so at 250 hertz at 500 hertz at 1000 hertz at 2000 hertz and at 4000 hertz at all these frequencies we can see that the bone conduction thresholds are less than 20 okay so the interpretation is that there is no sensory neural hearing loss in this patient i am not commenting anything on the conductive hearing loss at present i am only saying that this patient is not having any sensory neural hearing loss okay another example now here we can see that the bone conduction thresholds at 250 500 and 1000 hertz are within 20 decibels and as the frequency increases that is 1500 then 2000 3000 and so on we see the bone conduction thresholds also increase so we can say that this patient is having sensory neural hearing loss at higher frequencies okay so bone conduction thresholds are now more than 20 here we can see that the bone conduction thresholds they are more than 20 so by bone looking only at bone conduction thresholds we can only comment on sensory neural component so we can here say that this patient is having sensory neural hearing loss whether conductive component is there or not i am not commenting anything at present so the third point is clear by looking at the bone conduction thresholds if they are more than 20 it means sensory neural loss if they are less than 20 it means no sensory neural hearing loss fine moving further now the fourth thing we have to identify it is the abg or the air bone gap now air bone gap it is the difference in the thresholds of air conduction and bone conduction that is called air bone gap so if air bone gap at any frequency it is less than 20 then we say that there is no conductive hearing loss while if air bone gap is more than 20 we say that conductive hearing loss is present so when i am commenting on the air bone gap i am not commenting anything on sensory neural hearing loss i am only commenting on the conductive component okay so by bone conduction thresholds we know the sensory neural hearing loss by air conduct air bone gap we know about conductive hearing loss so it will be more clear with the example now here see now we have to see the air bone gap so here we at for example at 250 hertz i see that uh, bone conduction it, it is at 5 decibels and air conduction it is at 10 decibels so 10 minus 5 is air bone gap that is 5 so 5 is less than 20 it means it is not significant so no conductive hearing loss at this frequency similarly we can calculate for all frequencies so we'll find that there is no conductive hearing loss so at 1000 also also we can see that uh, the air conduction it is at 15 bone conduction it is at 5 so 15 minus 5 is 10 
Now, 10 is not significant. So we can comment that this patient is not having conductive hearing loss because there is no significant airborne gap at any frequency. Okay, now this was the uh, same uh, audiogram in which we commented on sensory neural status of the patient in which the bone conduction thresholds were within 20 decibels. So this patient was not having sensory neural hearing loss. Now we say that this is not, he is not having conductive hearing loss also. It means that this is an audiogram of a patient with normal hearing. Okay, so in normal hearing patient, the bone conduction thresholds will be within 20 decibels and there will be no significant ear moon gap at any frequency. So this is how an audiogram of a patient with normal hearing look like. So we have seen the four point now. Again, this is another example. Now here, we have seen four points. So first point, by color coding we can say, or by symbols we can say that this is audiogram of uh, left ear. Second point, by broken line, this is the bone conduction thresholds and continuous line, these are the air conduction thresholds. Two points. Third point, we have to look for the bone conduction thresholds, whether they are out of 20 or within 20. So here we can see that they are within 20 at all frequencies. Okay, so they are within 20. It means that this patient is not having sensory neural ear loss. Fourth point, we have to comment on the airborne gap. So if we see the airborne gap at 250 hertz, we see that it is uh, 45 minus 15. That is 30. Now 30 is more than 20. So that is a significant airborne gap at 256, 250 hertz. Similarly, at other frequencies also, if we uh, subtract air conduction thresholds from bone conduction, so we will find that it is more than 20 at all frequencies. So this patient is having conductive hearing loss. Okay. So this is an audiogram of a patient with conductive hearing loss, where the bone conduction thresholds are within normal uh, limits, but the airborne gap. It is more than 20. So this is an example of a patient with conductive hearing loss. Now degree of hearing loss. So this is important. Now up till now we have done one use of uh, audiogram. As I told you that audiogram helps us to determine the type of hearing loss, the degree of the hearing loss and the nature of the hearing loss. So we see here that we now know the type, whether the patient has a sensory neural or whether the patient has a conductive hearing loss that we can know. So fifth point is how can we know the degree of the hearing loss? So for degree of the hearing loss, for example, if a patient is having conductive hearing loss, we take the average of the airborne gaps at these three frequencies that is 500, 1000 and 2000. Similarly for sensory neural hearing loss, we take the average of the bone conduction thresholds at 500, 1000 and 2000. Now generally we take these three frequencies only because these are the speech frequencies and these are the common frequencies which are present in our normal day-to-day -day conversations and routine. So that is why we take uh, the average of these frequencies and this will give us the degree of the hearing loss. So how it is calculated, the degree, that is, uh, I'll tell you. Now here we can see that this patient is having, if you go one, two, three, four points, it is left ear, both thresholds are there, bone conduction within normal thresholds, significant ear bone gap. So this patient is having a left side conductive hearing loss. So we can comment this much only. This, this patient is having left side conductive hearing loss. How much conductive? That is the degree. That is what we will calculate here. So as I told you, we have to take the average of ear bone gap at three frequencies. So at 500, we see that it is somewhat we can say 45 minus or 42 minus uh, say 18 at this frequency 500 then 40 minus 10 at 1000 and 35 minus 5 at 2000 so when we add these three and divide by three so that is how we can get a degree of the hearing loss so we can see it as i have already calculated it this is the difference of airborne gap at 500 this is the difference at 1000 and this is the difference at 2000 hertz. We add up all these differences, we divide it by 3 and we get 28 decibels. So this patient is having average 28 decibels conductive hearing loss. Got it? Similarly, one we will calculate for sensory neural also. So as I told you that 
okay going from point number 1 2 3 4 this is a pure tone audiogram showing the hearing thresholds of both ears it is showing bone conduction as well as ear conduction of both ears now first i will concentrate only on right ear so for right bone conduction thresholds if i see then they are more than 20 okay 500 they are 25 and similarly at 1000 they are 35 and at 2000 we can say 50 or 55 so they are more than 20 that, that means this patient is having sensory neural hearing loss but there is no significant airborne gap you 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 just see only red lines because i'm only commenting on right here don't look at the left part so in air conduction and bone conduction there is no air bone gap in this patient so this patient is having only pure sensory neural hearing loss okay now we have to calculate the degree of this hearing loss so degree of bone conduction or the threshold of bone conduction at 500 that is around 25 plus 35 plus we can say 50 or 55 so we add up we divide it by 3 and then we can get 32 decibels in this patient so this patient is having around 32 decibels sensory neural hearing loss in right ear i think similar will come for left ear also because we see the graphs are similar so 32 decibels bilateral sensory neural hearing loss got it so by these five points we have commented on two properties of an audiogram the type of the hearing loss as well as the degree of the hearing loss now this is a quantitative uh, absolute uh, hearing loss now who has a classification for that in which according to the average thresholds of speech frequencies they have classified the hearing impairment as this so if the patient is having average uh, thresholds at three frequencies that is 500 1k and 2k if it is between 0 to 25 we say it is not significant between 26 to 40 it is mild okay now coming back to this example this is 32 which falls in the mild category again refining my diagnosis this patient is having right side mild sensory neural hearing loss okay so this is my complete interpretation of this audiogram right side so i have determined the side sensory neural hearing loss i have determined the type of the hearing loss of mild degree that is degree of the hearing loss okay mild type now still one point is remaining that is nature of the hearing loss so that we will see in subsequent slides so first we see that what is the classification and if it is between 41 to 55 decibels hearing loss then it is moderate degree of hearing impairment 56 to 70 it is considered as moderately severe 71 to 90 it is severe and more than 91 it is profound now again this is a very standard classification so these terms you should remember in exams in neat uh, mcqs can be directly asked that what is the degree of hearing impairment if the uh, thresholds are between 41 to 55 so it will be moderate so these are standard terminologies proposed by who so we have to remember these things okay now the third component that is the nature of the hearing loss nature means that uh, if the patient is having either conductive hearing loss or sensory neural hearing loss but there will be some typical feature of that hearing loss in the sense that some particular frequency may be involved or some uh, frequencies may be involved more than the other so that we will see how so if if you are given this audiogram to interpret in your exam then one two three four five points point number one this is blue color so we can say it is of left ear but again we have to be cautious sometimes it is a xerox copy so better we focus on the symbols so these are the bone conduction symbol for uh, left ear and these are the air conduction symbol for left ear so first point left ear second point these are the bone conduction thresholds these are the air conduction so both these things have been plotted so two points over third point the bone conduction thresholds they are within 20 decibels or not so they are within 20 decibels except at 2000 hertz where it is more than 20 you can see that it is 30 but again it goes back within 20 decibels so this is a dip here at 2000 hertz so we can say that this particular patient is having a dip in the bone conduction at 2000 hertz okay fifth fourth point whether there is any airborne gap or not so at 250 we can say that it is 65 minus 15 so that is around 50 
Similarly, 70 minus 20 again. So we they say that it is a significant earphone gap. So this patient is having left side conductive hearing loss. Now conductive hearing loss, then we have to measure the degree also. So for this, 70 minus 20 is 50. Then 65 minus 20, it is uh, uh, 45. Then similarly, 70 minus 20, it is again 50. So approximately it will be, uh, we'll see, I'll, I think I'll calculate it, we'll see. Now this is what is called a Carhartt's notch. So this is again a very important uh, point here that a dip in the frequency of bone conduction at 2000 Hertz, it is called Carhartt's notch. And this is typically seen in patients with autosclerosis in which the stapes foot plate is fixed. Now the reason is that every part of the conductive pathway, it has a, a natural re re resonating frequency. Okay, so stapes foot plate maximum resonates at this frequency, that is 2000 Hertz. So if there is uh, any pathology of the stapes foot plate, it will affect this frequency more. That is called ossicular inertia. So because of that reason, we see a dip in the 2000. So this is a 2K notch, Carhartt's notch seen in autosclerosis. So this is a patient with left side, moderate conductive hearing loss with Carhartt's notch at 2000 Hz, most probably seen in autosclerosis. So now we have commented properly on all three aspects of an audiogram. That is the type of the hearing loss, that is conductive hearing loss, the degree of the hearing loss that is moderate hearing loss and the characteristic of the hearing loss or any particular nature of the hearing loss. In this example, it is Carhartt's notch. Okay, so this is a with more and we see that this is a left ear moderate conductive hearing loss. So when you calculate the degree, it will come to moderate. That is between 41 to 55 decibels. So this is how we have to interpret any given audiogram given to us. Another example, now here, we can say that this is a pure tone audiogram of left ear showing the ear conduction and bone conduction thresholds. The bone conduction thresholds, they are within 20 decibels at all frequencies except at 4000 Hertz. So suddenly we see that at 4000 Hertz we see a dip in the frequency and there is no significant ear bone gap. Okay, we cannot see any ear bone gap at any frequency, even in higher frequencies. So this is a pure tone audiogram of a uh, patient with uh, of a left ear showing sensory neural hearing loss at 4000 hertz so that particular this particular type of hearing loss it is seen with noise induced hearing loss so this is called a 4k notch previously we saw Carhartt's notch which was a, at 2000 or a 2k notch this is a 4k notch that is seen in noise induced hearing loss okay so again moving further this is a pure tone audiogram of left ear showing increased uh, bone conduction thresholds at 250, 500, then 1000 even. But after that, at higher frequencies, we see that the hearing thresholds are improving actually. Okay. And there is no significant ear bone gap. Now here it is 60 minus 40, it is 20. It is not more than 20. So this is not significant at all frequencies. So this patient is having left side sensory neural hearing loss more at lower frequencies. Okay. So what will be the diagnosis? Left mild. Mild because when you calculate the uh, average of these three frequencies, it will be between 26 and 40. So that is why it is mild. So left side mild sensory neural hearing loss involving lower frequencies more. So this particular type of audiogram we get in Meniere's disease. Okay. Now see, we can say that this is an upslope type of curve. It means lower frequencies are more involved. As the frequencies increase, the hearing thresholds improve. So this is upslope curve. And it is typically seen in Meniere's disease, but uh, uh, earlier stages of Meniere's disease. In later stage, ultimately our frequencies will be involved. But in earlier stage, we get such type of an audiogram. Another one, this is a pure tone audiogram of left ear showing normal hearing bone conduction thresholds up till 1000 Hertz, but then there is a sudden increase in the bone conduction thresholds. Okay, and there is no significant ear bone gap at any frequency. So we can comment that this patient is having left side high frequency sensory neural hearing loss. 
previously we saw it was low frequency lower frequencies were affected more this is high frequency and this is a typical picture of a patient with presbycusis presbycusis it is an it is an aging condition in which because of the degeneration of the outer hair cells or the nerve fibers the patient complains of hearing loss with age but that is typically a high frequency sensory neural hearing loss so here we can see that this is a down slope curve and previous one where lower frequencies were affected it was an up slope curve so these uh, can be asked in your uh, even in your mbbs theory practical examinations as well as a, a neat examination now because image based questions are there so such audiology images can be given and they can ask you to comment on the uh, the interpretation so this is a left side high frequency sensory neural loss as seen in presbycusis okay another example so this is a pure tone audiogram of left ear showing bone conduction thresholds below 20 at all frequencies though so this patient is not having any uh, sensory neural component but we have significant ear bone gap at all frequencies so when you calculate the degree by uh, summing up the differences at 500 1 can 2 can dividing it by 3 so you can say that this is a case of mild conductive hearing loss of left side okay now based on once you give the interpretation then further questions can be there okay uh, this type of audiogram is seen in which condition so i told you if it is down slope it is press by cusis if it is up slope it is minier's disease if it is 4k notch it is noise induced hearing loss if it is 2k notch it is otosclerosis so by audiology we can get an idea about the disease also the pathology also okay so this is the final audiogram of uh, my first part of the talk now here we can say that uh, uh, the bone conduction and the air conduction thresholds both have been plotted so this is an audiogram of right ear okay previous ones were of left ear this is of right ear now here we can see that symbol has changed because this is a symbol for masked uh, bone conduction so here masking has been done okay so here we see that the bone conduction thresholds are more that is they are more than 20 at almost all frequencies and there is ear bone gap also so here we see that 45 minus uh, 20 similarly 50 uh, or 60 minus 30 so we have significant ear bone gap as well as the bone conduction thresholds are more than uh, 20 so we can say that this patient is having mixed hearing loss mixed hearing loss means he is having the conductive component also and is having the sensory neural component also so sometimes with aging or even in csm also we can get such type of of an audiogram so this is an example of right side mixed hearing loss so i hope uh, now all of you should be able to interpret an audiogram whenever you are given an any audiogram you should uh, remember the five points and try to comment on the type of the hearing loss the nature of the hearing loss as well as the degree of the hearing loss now the second part of my today's talk it is impedance audiometry now impedance audiometry it has two parts one is tympanometry another one is acoustic reflex now today i will be only talking about tympanometry so tympanometry uh, now whenever any sound is uh, given to the ear it goes inside the ear but the middle ear it has its resistance it it some part uh, that some sound energy it will easily go through and some it is reflected back okay so by so whatever sound is reflected back if we get those signals it will give an indirect idea about the pathology of the middle ear so tympanometry it is a very useful investigation to know any pathology of the middle ear and it is uh, it is the investigation of choice when we get a conductive hearing loss with intact tympanic membrane it means tympanic membrane is intact still we are getting conductive it means there has to be some pathology in the middle ear to know that pathology the next investigation of choice after pure tone audiogram it is uh, tympanometry which is a part of impedance audiometry so the principle of uh, this tympanometry is it actually measures the compliance of the tympano auricular system against the pressure changes compliance means the ease with which 
the tympano ossicular system allows the sound go to go through and impedance means the resistance it offers to the sound okay so if we are able to measure this compliance we can indirectly get an idea of any pathology in the tympano ossicular system that is the middle ear so it is useful for middle ear pathologies and it is an objective test so again it is a very good uh, objective test to know the uh, condition of the middle ear so we'll see how it is done and what is the interpretation here we can see that uh, in this tympanometry it is done by using a probe which is fixed snugly into the ear channel of the patient now this probe it contains three channels as we can see here in this figure 1 2 and 3 so first is the oscillator oscillator it will produce a tone and this tone is generally at 220 hertz frequencies the second channel is the air pump which will increase or decrease the pressure in the external canal and third one it is a microphone which will pick the reflected sound so from one the sound will go it will hit the tympanic membrane some sound will dissipate and some sound energy will come back which will be received by probe 3 that is microphone and this probe 2 it will increase or decrease the pressure so we will see the what is the effect of pressure changes on the compliance of the middle ear that is the principle of impedance audiometry now liden and jerger they classified the graphs of the tympanometry into five types type a type as type ad type b and type c so i'll show you each and every graph and then i'll show you in which condition it is uh, we get such type of graph now as i told you it is, a, it is an objective test so when we use the probe and when we press the button on the impedance audiometer then directly the graph comes out it is printed out and we can interpret it so what is type a now this is an impedance audiometer graph in which we can see that on y axis we measure the compliance okay so on y axis compliance is measured and the unit of compliance is milliliters or cubic centimeters milliliters and on x axis we see that there is ear canal pressure and the unit is decapascals so it is on the right side it is positive pressure in the middle it is zero and as we go to the left we get negative pressure now in the this green uh, rectangle which is drawn it is the normal compliance of the middle ear that it ranges from minus 50 to plus 50 decapascals that is normal pressure and the normal compliance is 0.3 to 1.6 uh, cubic centimeters or milliliters so if we get our graph anywhere in this triangle we say that this is type a curve or it is a normal tympanogram so normal tympanogram means maximum or normal compliance which can be anywhere between 0.3 and 1.6 but uh, we can say it is either 0.6 to 1 so here we can see that it is 1 so this is the normal maximum compliance at zero ambient pressure so this is type a curve which we get get in normal individuals in which the middle ear function is normal now ear canal volume it is around 0.6 to 2.5 cubic centimeters normal middle ear pressure ranges from minus 50 to plus 50 decapascals and admittance or the compliance it is 0.3 to 1.6 cubic centimeters so these are the normal values which we should remember while interpreting the uh, tympanograms so that was type a now this is type c uh, tympanogram sorry type as so here we can see that normal compliance should be around 0.6 here and the normal pressure should be here so here pressure is normal that is zero where maximum compliance is there but this maximum compliance has decreased now so this is a graph with a low compliance but normal pressure which is called type as curve and it is typically seen if there is any ossicular fixation for example otosclerosis where there is fixation of stapes foot plate or even in uh, malleus fixation so in neat you will be given this uh, tympanogram and then you will be asked to identify the disease or reversely you will be uh, told that a patient is having otosclerosis which type of uh, tympanogram do we get that is type as that is low compliance but the pressure is normal that is the maximum compliance though it is low but it is coming at normal pressure of 0 decapascals so this is type as 
then another is type a d here the compliance is very high now we see that there is no peak it is almost going up to infinity we can say but again the pressure is normal the maximum is again at 0 mm only 0 decapascals only so here we can say that it is high compliance again normal pressure type a d we cannot identify the peak it is going way up and this is seen in ossicular discontinuity or if the membrane is thin and lax so if you want to understand it we can say that if there is ossicular discontinuity then whatever sound energy is going it will be dissipated so the compliance will be very high compliance means the property of the middle ear to let the sound energy pass through it if there is ossicular discontinuity whatever sound energy we give all will go inside and dissipate it will be dissipated so by this we can understand that this is type a d you can remember d for d so type a d is seen in ossicular discontinuity or if it is a very thin and lax tympanic membrane what type of uh, tympanogram it is type b it is also called a fat, flat curve or a dome shaped curve again we see that there is no peak so the compliance is a bit low and there is no peak so there is no change in the compliance with pressure you increase the pressure you decrease the pressure the compliance almost remains same so that is called type b curve and it is most commonly seen with fluid in the middle ear or if there is any thick tympanic membrane okay so the common pathology or the common condition in which we get type of type b is secretory otitis media which is also called glue ear which is a very common pathology in children so that is type b tympanogram flat curve then this is type c here we can see that the compliance is almost near normal that is around one cubic centimeter but the pressure is now negative so maximum compliance but negative pressure in type a we saw that pressure was normal compliance was high or low here compliance is normal pressure is low okay so maximum compliance and negative pressure and this is uh, seen if there is eustachian tube dysfunction because the function of the eustachian tube is to equilibrate the middle ear pressure with that of the uh, environment but if it is not able to do so then there will be negative pressure in the middle ear which is manifested as type c tympanogram or if there is retracted tympanic membrane again in retracted tympanic membrane there will be negative pressure in the middle ear so we get uh, such type of an tympanogram so by looking at the tympanogram we can know the condition of the middle ear because all these conditions which we saw in all these conditions the tympanic membrane will be intact so there has to be some pathology in the middle ear type b fluid in the middle ear type as fixation of ossicles in the middle ear type ad discontinuity of ossicles in the middle ear type c negative pressure in the middle ear so there is no pathology of the tympanic membrane so on otoscopic examination we will see that the tympanic membrane is normal but when we go for this tympanometry we will uh, come to know the pathology or the any condition present in the middle ear so in neat you will be asked a question that what is the next investigation of choice for a patient with conductive hearing loss and intent, intact tympanic membrane so your answer should be it is impedance audiometry so i hope uh, i have tried to make my lecture uh, um, easy for you to understand and the objective of this lecture was all of you should be able to interpret an audiogram or a tympanogram which was given to you so thank you very much for your patient listening and if you have any queries uh, most welcome you can put it in the chat box and i'll be answering those so thank you very much Thank you so much, sir. That was really a beautiful presentation. We have a lot of uh, good appreciation messages in chat box and there is no any particular doubts. So I hope we can close the session. Thank you very much, all the listeners. I hope all of you enjoyed the session and this was really helpful and it is really useful. Please spread the word to all of your friends. You can see our YouTube channel. Please share it with your friends tinyurl.com slash Indian Medical College 2020. Please share our Facebook page fb.com slash Indian Medical College 2020.
you can access all the recorded videos and we will be posting important mcqs in the fb page and other important announcements will be placed in the fb page so please do follow there and tomorrow we are having some good sessions uh, with the same timing 3 to 4 pm 5 to 6 pm and 6 30 to 7 30 pm uh, the first session will be uh, about staphylococcus dr mohammed khalil from Deccan College of Medical Sciences will be delivering this talk. And second session will be delivered by Dr. Bhim Shetty Rajesh from KMCT Medical College. And he is going to talk about legal procedures in forensic medicine. And third session is about abdominal trauma. And Dr. Ashwini Pujari sir will be delivering this talk. Thank you so much for joining. Please do support us. Thank you all. <laughs>